It always comes from the root chakra. It always goes back to you, to you. Because you're the one who's afraid. You're the one who's experiencing the fear. And you can take a look at it. You can, you should examine this for yourself. Because it's this subject is very big. And it, it also goes back to a lot of different things from the time you were born, your genetics, you know, your DNA makeup, what kind of family you grew up in. Is this a type of an environment that your family, your parents, uh, your guardians, whomever you grew up with, they're, they're the type of people who are always afraid and they're always projecting uh, to th into things. Um, I personally grew up with parents who were always afraid of a lot of different things. Like if I wanted to go out on the street and play football, they were afraid. If I wanted to go swimming, they were afraid. If I wanted to go uh, to school, they were afraid. If I wanted to go skiing, they were really paranoid. Something's going to happen. They were always afraid that something's going to happen to me. And there was a lot of fear. And I grew up around that. And it's not very comfortable. And then, of course, you can have family guardians who are not very much concerned and they're really loose about it. So, but basically, this fear that we have for whatever it is, our kids, our finances, our body, our future, it's a projection. We're projecting something from the past into the future. And it always comes back to me. It always come back to the I thought. I am someone separated from the source. Therefore, I really need to look after myself. I really need to watch out for myself. That's... I am separated from the source and uh, I really have to worry about what's going to happen in my retirement. How am I going to make it? What's going to happen to me? How am I going to pay my bills? What's going to happen to me 10 years from now? Um, what what's going to happen to my children 10 years from now? So I need to worry about it. I need to be, to be concerned about it. But it all goes back to me, to the I thought, the preservation of the individual, of the separated individual who has the sense of disconnection, has a sense that it's someone, somebody separated from the source separated from totality and it has to look after itself so as you um your awareness starts to expand and you become more meditative and you're diving more within yourself and starting to realize that there is an order in existence and and if you get more evolved and you get to the point that you start realizing that this i thought this individual this person who has a sense of separation rightfully because that's how we were born basically into this world the lila and basically every human being after age 
age two, two and a half, picks up their ego and they begin to have this sense of separation uh, and begin to, as they get older, they begin to start to identify with their own personal authorship as this is my life and I'm the creator of this life and uh, I'm creating my own reality. Uh, I make mistakes. And when I do something really good and I win and I gain, you know, I'm very proud of myself. My ego comes and says, look at me, look at me. I did it. I created it. I worked hard and I got to this point. And when I'm in situations that I lose, uh, whatever that is, um, I blame myself that I made mistakes. I'm an idiot. I'm stupid. I never learn. And the mind comes, and I'm sure you're all very familiar with it, that going through the process of self-hate, self, -hate, self um, lack of self-love, not accepting ourselves, and blaming ourselves for our past mistakes um, and our shortcomings. So that sense of separation is, and that sense that I am a person separated from the whole, therefore I'm really responsible for my actions, then because we have that sense, then we take it very personal and we keep projecting this fear into the future. And, uh, and it's haunting us. And if you uh, really look at it, a lot of our decisions basically in life is coming from fear of what's going to happen to me. Basically, what's going to happen to me? What about 20 years, 10 years from now on, when I'm older, what's going to happen to my retirement? What's going to happen to my assets? What's going to happen to people around me? Am I going to be lonely? And you can see that as you're getting older, you're just hanging on on things stronger, you know, whatever you can hang on to. And some people become very fanatic because of the fear of losing. So you're just really hanging on to things. Your grip gets tighter. And it's ironic because life is going to do whatever it wants to do. And uh, no matter how hard you're trying to hang on to things or dear life or, or whatever situation, uh, life does its thing and it doesn't care. Or fear of disease, fear of sickness, or of course, uh, today's subject is coronavirus. So what happens if I get it? Or what happens if I die? So you just kind of look into this and you look at yourself. And you pay attention as awareness comes. And when you're making your decisions in life, uh, pay attention, take a look at it, see where it's coming from, where, from what place you're making this decision. You're in a relationship with somebody um, and it's going really well, or it gets rocky and all of a sudden fear comes. But that fear, when you chase it to, to look where it's coming from, you're going you're gonna to see it always goes back to me. What's going to happen to me if my partner leaves, if my partner dies, if my kids leave me? What's going to happen to me? It's always a me there. 